Greeny, you know how to win at business? Tell me how. Show up early for meetings. That way, everybody who's only on time looks like slackers. Well, I got a better way to win at business. What's that? Instant free nights at La Quinta Inns and Suites. You can show up with no advance reservation and redeem your La Quinta Returns loyalty points for a free night that same night just by using the La Quinta app. I feel like I'd win at business more than you. I'd cream you at business. Impossible. I'm undefeated at business. Go to LQ.com now and prepare to win at business. Add an info for McFarland, Info Greeny and Golick, Mike and Mike here on ESPN Radio and ESPN Two. It is winning word time. This is a phenomenal time. Okay, you want the sound? I'll give you the sound. Have so many voices in Are they in your ear right now? Oh, they're always here. Oh, always here. Good. Around. Say the word. I'll say the word. We've given you a chance to possibly go to all seven games of the finals. A chance to bring seven friends to a finals game. How are we going to cap this off? You and a guest plus seven thousand dollars. That's right, seven thousand dollars in your pocket to take in an NBA finals game in ultimate style. The Mike and Mike Dream Final Sweepstakes presented by Dell for Small Business. The word one final time is final. F I N A L. Brought to you by Dell for Small Business. Booger. How can the people win? Well, there's two ways you can enter, and only two ways, and you can enter both ways. The first way is you can text it to 777 or you can enter online at www.mikescontest.com slash finals. Once again, two ways and only two ways to enter. You can text it to 777 or you can enter online www.mikescontest.com slash finals and you can win seven stacks. This is your final chance to win. Yeah, this is the final chance. And and I'm curious. Go ahead. And I don't know if anyone knows the answer. So are we giving 7000 cash? Uh, do we have to pay taxes on that? Because um, I've already entered. So I, I would like to know that if we do win this, do we have to pay taxes on this? Uh, less than 10 You all right? Well, I'm just curious. I mean, somebody out there wants to know this. Okay, like, whoever well, wins this is going to want to know the answer oh, no, to this let, question. Thanks for ruining the contest. I'm this not ruining like, the contest. Hey, what's up with LeBron's legacy? Well, it was more games. <laughs> You know, I think I think that's yeah. Booger's Booger's right. doing the MJ LeBron thing on the right. seven grand. No, I'm not. If, yeah. you, if you really thanks want to for answer, the seven, but I'll, you know. I'll give you an answer off air. I have the answer. I'll okay. give it to you off air. I don't want, to, as Ryan's pointing out, disparage this wonderful prize. First of all, when you give away seven thousand dollars, they take twenty percent. You're not ruining the seven grand. It's just a matter of fact. No, it's but you're ruining, ruining the contest a little bit, a little bit, right? Okay, and, and and at one point you may be ruining this show. So no, well, okay, yeah, let's move on, dude. <laughs> Uh, it's me and Booger. We got Ryan Russell. The Ryan Russell Show, as always, one to four weekdays right here on ESPN Radio. We're presented by Progressive Insurance. All of our phone guests via the Shell Penzo Performance Line, Mike and Mike on ESPN Radio and ESPN2. A lot to get to with Ryan. I want to have this conversation that you saw me about in the hallway. Rudy's bringing up the 80s. We're a lousy decade. We'll do that in a second. We're LeBron, the GOAT. But what's it been like for you? The show has been great, but you've had rotating co-hosts. How is that going for you? you know, the best part about the whole thing is, is the favorites. Like people close to the program, meaning the show, <laughs> will go, you know, Adnan stops by. And then I'll get a bunch of texts from my friends. And be like, man, Adnan is so good. You guys have this great thing. And then I'll get a couple that come rolling a little bit later. And they go, don't like them. And then, you know, I'll do a Will Kane, and then it'll be a ton of, like, you're not doing this, are you? And I'm like, no, I like Will Kane. Like, Will Kane's really good. You got, like, you know, and, and it hurts a little bit because I, I miss my buddy. And we, we, Sarah Spain was awesome. And Sarah Spain and I got into some stuff. Like, we had some really deep. All the control coach right, conversation right, came right. up. Yeah. And that, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the tenseness of it. And you're like, this is really good. And then my buddies will text me. Some will go, that was really good, man. She was awesome. And then I'll have another buddy go, you're not doing that, are you? And I'm just like, man, this is brutal. And, like, I've suggested things like Charlotte McKinney is a co-host, but they're afraid that, like, she's going to be good on the ACC, SEC, but not so much the Pac-12, which I totally get. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, look, we're just doing this probably for the rest of the summer, so we'll see. This is good. Like, I feel really relieved right now because, like, this is a breath of fresh air. And here's the reason I say that, because you're going through all these people who you like and don't like. Yeah. Well, and, well I mean, <laughs> let's I'm just keep saying, it as like, a like. No, seriously. Let's, you're let's going stay positive these... early on a Friday. Okay, well you, well, you can positively phrase it. That's what sure, they tell sure. my kids at school. But, <laughs> like, they asked me, say, hey, you, you want to come over with Rusillo? I don't know. Does he like me or not? I don't know. Like, and I never got an answer back. So I'm assuming you didn't like me. I was never told that you were an option. Oh, okay. They always oh. use you on Mike and Mike. Do you honestly think? That I wouldn't want to do a show with you, but no, I don't honestly think that. You and but, I are cool. But, Come but on, how are you going through this stuff in your mind? Like, yeah, like they like Adnan, they like, but I like Will Kane, but no, they don't like Will Kane. So I'm just curious. Here's what, what I heard: go. is that Booger was like, once I got some of that Mike and Mike juice, I don't want <laughs> no, to say like <laughs> afternoon. He's like, I'm not doing that. No, listen, I am a morning person though, but for <laughs> for you. I, I will do the <laughs> afternoons, just so you know that. All right, good. We got you in the mix then. I like it. Okay, add Booger to the list, and we'll see how that Does that out. hurt you at all, Adnan? Are you okay? 
okay? No. You know you don't have a 100% approval rating, right? No, no, I 100%. And th- but the thing that's consistent, though, is the ones that like me, it's always the same reasons. I'm sure it's the same way with you, Phil, in. Why? Not with Ryan, but on the show. The things that they like about you, oh, yeah, Adnan's funny, I like the movie talk. The ones that hate me, I hate the movie talk. God, his laugh's annoying. He brings nothing to the table. Like, it's consistent in both criticism and praise. Are you funny or do you laugh a lot? Well, that's the other thing. I don't think I am particularly funny. But, but, <laughs> Which do you but, think? But I'm, I'm curious. I'm curious. No, I'm look, a lot. I'm curious that you're asking right. that question. But see, I'm this a good, is, <laughs> I don't know if like, we'll probably have to move on to, hey, you guys we're haven't talked about Jordan we're, LeBron we're, yet. We will in a second, I promise. I do think the process of doing it is so different than – than anybody realizes because when you're really in it every single day like there'll be gears that guys hit and when Adnan did his little league coaching rant on how bad his kid's team is <laughs> yeah. like that was awesome <laughs> and I'm eight? just yeah I'm just sitting back One seven right and then he's keeping track I'm like what's your son hitting he's like oh Yusuf's hitting 800 and I go well who's keeping track of the stats he's like I am yeah. I'm like so <laughs> yeah. wait a minute how many errors are we talking he's like I don't know errors we got Wade Boggs over here at eight <laughs> years old <laughs> all right well, anyway UCR is excellent uh, at long last, we turned into some NBA conversation. <laughs> the final has been set. This is what we want all along, right? Cavs, Warriors. Yeah, that's what I wanted. So nobody can complain anymore. Now we're going to get well, a great no. finals, right? I, I wouldn't go that far that no one can complain. I get the complaints, right? Right. It's 28 different fan bases that are emotionally attached to something yeah. going, this is the worst. Like, this is why we had all of this angst. But what I look at when I see the playoffs, they were terrible, but it's like bad traffic on the Pacific Coast Highway to get to that great vac- vacation <laughs> spot, right? Yeah. Because we finally... We all knew this was going to happen. We all, like, I didn't even want to pick it again because I just wanted to be a little bit different. I go, who are you actually going? Like, what are you going to do, pick Toronto? You're going to pick the Celtics going to the East? Like, it's not happening. Right. And for everything that's on the line here, you know, with LeBron, I think there is less pressure because he delivers on that promise coming back to Cleveland. But because he's chasing this one dude who he surpasses last night in playoff scoring, which I'm sure we'll get to at some point, and then Durant, who without question has the most pressure on him than any player in the NBA. I mean, people are going, oh, match up the finals. No, no, man, it's Durant with the most pressure. I don't really know who's even close to him at second for the pressure to win a ring here because everybody's mad at him. People think it's even worse what he did by leaving OKC that was up 3-1 against Golden State and just jumping ship. They think it's worse than what LeBron did. I think a lot of this stuff is debatable. I don't want to beat up on players for leaving in free agency. I don't think it's a shock to see him have a little bit more fun playing with Golden State than playing alongside Russ. But the weird thing about this is that it's going to feel, and I'm not doing this, yeah. but if Golden State wins this thing, it's going to be this really kind of odd, you know, disrespected title and it may be better for Durant and the way he's talked about. Again, this is not me, but just somebody that observes all this stuff. It could be better for Durant and the Warriors if this is a close series, where if Durant is great and they win in six or seven, that people are going to feel like it's more legitimate. Whereas if Golden State were to sweep this thing, and I'm not saying they're going to, that people will just kind of go, oh, whatever, like as if it's somehow a discredited ring. I, I think this is a series that's, that's set up perfectly because – Durant gets to play with guys that share the basketball. He feels more like a team. And so you have that super team over there. But how do you get LeBron motivated? Because he already said he delivered on his promise. You get him motivated by putting him in the underdog role. And there is no doubt about it. He is the underdog in this series. And he's, if he's the best player in the world and he's motivated by being the underdog, to me, that's the only opportunity that Cleveland has to win this series because – I honestly don't think the series goes six. I think Golden State is the better team. They played the better defense all year long. And I know we, we've gotten on the Cleveland bandwagon and say, yeah, they flipped the switch. Yeah, they flipped the switch against I don't bad offensive did. teams. Yeah, I mean, I, these offensive right. teams were bad. So I honestly think the one thing that can get LeBron going is the fact that he's going to go in this series as the greatest player in the NBA today, and nobody thinks he can win. That's a great point. I mean, this is, what, six times now he's going to be the dog in the NBA Finals, and I think Jordan was only an underdog in that first one against the Lakers. Yep. So, you know, when we start doing this whole thing, maybe you get to get a little deeper into all this. But I, I love the factor that Booger brings up here because LeBron, like there were some concerns when, Cav, when the Cavs were kind of leaking there a little bit that LeBron is still chasing something really significant, and there may be other dudes on the team going, hey, man, we got it. <laughs> we're good. We, we got ours. But – if I'm Golden State, okay, if I'm this entire organization, I am looking at like, – I don't know how you guys do it at the pro level, Booker, okay? So I know it's not always Hoosiers on a Friday night yeah, yeah. pizza. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. <laughs> but at some point I have to talk to my team and go, you are so much better than them, right? You understand. You understand Pete Golden State versus Pete Cleveland, there isn't a contest, all right? Part of it's the defense and part of it's the scoring options that Golden State has. Not saying that they're going to sweep him here because I'm not in that sweep group. Mm-hmm. But they have made you a running joke. You won 73 games last year, 
and you blew it. You blew the 3-1 lead. You lost in seven games. A shot here, a shot there. You could have been back-to-back champs. But you have been ridiculed, disrespected. You were one of the great teams of all time. And because of what happened in the finals, you've been just a, an Internet meme for a year. They had a Halloween party where they had a corpse of Steph Curry that they had to step over to get into the party. <laughs> this has been petty 101 for an entire year. Do you guys have any heart? Because if you have any heart, you come out and you take their souls, all right? You remind them that last year was a fluke. I'm not saying it was, mm -hmm. but, like, that's the message that I'm handing my team because I was so disappointed when I saw Golden State get up double digits fourth quarter that Christmas game, mm -hmm. and then you blow that lead and you go, how can you not be more – just mad at the world ever everything that just happened to you. And now when they rematched up in Golden State, it was a disaster right. for Cleveland. But if you can get Golden State to that mindset of this is payback, this isn't just winning a title, this is payback for everything you had to go through. Mm -hmm. If you can get that message to them, then they should be able to take care of Cleveland. We're talking with Ron Rosillo right now. You can hear his show, The Rosillo Show, 1 to 4 Eastern on ESPN Radio. Adnan Burke and Booger McFarlane in for Green and Gold, like Mike and Mike on ESPN Radio and ESPN 2. Specific matchups. Is there any clear cut way that Cleveland can win when you're looking at individual matches? We were talking about how much fun it's going to be to see who defends LeBron. Durant is Iguodala. Um, you know, mix and match in different guys. So obviously, Draymond Green's going to get a shot. Is there any position or area that you go, you know what? Cleveland does definitively have the advantage there. Well, whoever LeBron's going up against, I mean, he's right. going to have that advantage. And it's, it's really – it'll be interesting to see kind of how they use LeBron defensively here because, I mean, even last night they put him on Marcus Smart. Right. So it's like we don't, we don't need you. And that, that's the Celtics, okay? Right. Are we going to get full, cranked-up defensive LeBron the whole time? Is that something you can pull off? I'm so sick of talking about rest. We are losers when we talk about this. They played eight games in 37 days, and then game three he's a little off. We're going uh, to – Worn down a little bit, yeah. A little tired, <laughs> you know? Like he a lot looked, of tread in those he looked a bit congested. <laughs> it's the NBA schedule, man. We need 60 games. I'm right. so sick of hearing about all that stuff, and I know everybody's against me on that one. But last year, defensively, what the Cavs did is they sold out on every Clay Curry possession. They would have the screener follow one of them and the original defender follow them. So they would run the double off of the screen, and they were getting killed on it in the first couple games. And you know what? They stayed with it. They stayed with it, but they stayed with it because Harrison Barnes could not hit a shot to save his life. Nope. And if Harrison Barnes has one decent shooting night, they're back-to-back -back champs. So now you have Durant in this role, which is not fit in the way offensively I think Golden State thought it would. Kerr's even mentioned this numerous times, the pick-and-roll, Steph, Durant kind of stuff here. But you can't really do that same thing. Like the concept will have to at least be changed because you, you don't have Harrison Barnes bricking threes in the corner this time around. Yeah, I think this is a situation where, regardless of who starts, mm -hmm. to me, it's the the secondary starters or secondary matchups that, that are going to be key. Or like closing minutes? The closing minutes, yeah. because we all know that Golden State wants to put Iggy uh, on LeBron in tough situations. Draymond will take the challenge, but Iguodawa is, is the guy who, if you go back two years ago, he's the guy that really, really gave LeBron, Le LeBron fit. So I'm just curious, when those closing time minutes come up, if you're T. Lou, what are you going to do with LeBron? Who are you going to put on Clay? Because I think, to Adnan's point, I think the one matchup where if you're, if you're Cleveland, you can say, okay, we can win this matchup. If you can get Steph Curry, if, if you can get Steph Curry on Kyrie, one-on-one -on -one situations, I don't think Kyrie, or excuse me, Steph Curry can check Kyrie. And I think that one-on-one -on -one matchup I don't think anyone favors can Cleveland. Stay, right. I mean, look, no one can stay in front of Kyrie. When we do the NBA draft stuff and we'll run video of a right. point guard coming into the league and then we'll show video of Russ and Kyrie getting around defenders, like I, I always tell our draft people, why do we run this? The NBA guys can't stay in front right. of these dudes, so who cares whether or not – you know, Lonzo Ball's going to stay in front of Kyrie. So you're right there. Mm -hmm. And the weird thing is, is Kyrie only seems to want to play defense when he's going up against Steph. Yes, that, that'll I, be fun. Like, he's somebody that, it's not that he's bad defensively, it's that he doesn't care. <laughs> Even in playoff games. <laughs> it's the apathy and, that right. upset And you. so he seems to care when he's going up against Steph. So they, like in a weird way, like they can't really hang with each other, but you at least see some more effort there from Kyrie because of what's on the line. But I'd imagine, because some of the closing numbers for Durant against LeBron aren't great, mm -hmm. like when it comes to closing time, it's, if it's close, I think they're going to – I don't know if they start with LeBron and Durant. They may not even want to do that, but they may do that at the end of games. And then with Iguodala's kind of up and down and then really good stretch there when Durant got hurt, Iguodala's playing great. Um, 
Maybe they feel like that's a matchup they want to get into a little bit earlier. The weird thing about Golden State is they're 12-0 and this point differential, and I'm still not sure how amazing they are because the West was obviously set back with the injuries. Mm-hmm. They're, what, 27-1 and in their last 28 games? And, and you, we're like, eh, you right. know. <laughs> like, I guess Portland mediocre, good. Utah yeah. mediocre, Spurs Portland about Portland was the worst defensive team in the playoffs. Right. So, you know, and then no Kawhi. Conversation is going to be a lot of fun about – if LeBron wins, the comparisons to Jordan. We'll get Ryan's take on that in just a second. Here is LeBron James himself on the comparison to MJ. I did I did pretty much everything that MJ did when I was a kid. I shot fadeaways before I should have. I, I wore a leg sleeve on my leg and folded it down so you saw the red part. For no reason. I wore black and red shoes with white socks. I wore short shorts cause you, so you could see my undershorts underneath. I, I didn't go bald like Mike, but... Uh, I'm getting there, <laughs> but I'm getting there, <laughs> but it'd be post-career though. Uh, that's the only thing I didn't do. Ooh, almost took a shot there at MJ, but not quite. <laughs> well, I, you know, Tristan is in the background. Oh, he's so out out out. only listening, just going, eh. like, but then again, Tristan was like, we yell at each other on switches. You screw up. So I don't want to start calling you bald <laughs> right. in front of everybody. No name calling here. If LeBron wins, we all know he's a decided yeah, underdog. Right, right. If he wins then this conversation will be inflamed even further. Better than MJ, as good as MJ. If he wins, where would you go with it? Instead of giving you the Billis thing where I say definitively, yes, he is better, no, he will not be better, which is the best way to answer these things, as Burger knows as an analyst, I'm sorry, i got to do the talk radio thing where I talk it around in circles for a minute or so, and then we try to figure it out. No, but I figure it out, though, yeah. Like, ability-wise, there's no gap. There's no gap between these two guys. They have different abilities, but their impact on the game and who they are skill-wise, I don't see a gap between the two. I, I, I just don't. But then when you look at rings, there's circumstances that play into this whole thing. And I have friends that are Jordan sycophants that are so annoying because it's just 6-0, and and that's it. It's 6-0, and 6-0, and 6-0. And, and as your man Jason Siegel said there, he goes, that's the only argument I need, Sean. Um, in the, I don't forget what movie was that. Or it was in the trailer, though. You're right. trailer, right, right. It was right. Every it, like, it. I would sit at home and see that trailer, and that, would make, that line made me mad. Right. Because I go, well, it, doesn't it have to be a little bit more complicated than that? It's not an individual sport. No. I, you know, right. Jerry West, people are like, well, you lost the finals all the time. Why are you talking? But he right. makes a great point. He's like, just, just sit here and count rings. Right. Like, what are we doing? If all we're doing is counting, then just print them out. Just right. print out the guys who got six, five, four, and then we'll just go, all right, <laughs> right. Rank Exactly. Them alphabetically, right. so I'd like to think it's a little bit more nuanced than that. But I mean, it's just hard if he's if he's four and four. Can you put him over somebody that's six and zero? Oh? A lot of people are just never ever going to have that. But if you're talking just ability as a player, like I don't think it's I don't think there's any problem. Like if you tell me you like LeBron's game better and you think he impacts the game just as much as MJ, I'm not going to tell you you're crazy. You know, like with most people, I think LeBron is more magic than Michael. I, I think if you want to compare someone to, to Michael, you go Kobe Bryant. He's the closest thing that we'll ever see to Michael Jordan. Now, who do you think is better, LeBron or Kobe? Um, wow, that's tough. I, I would have to lean toward Kobe. And here's the reason why. And I go just, LeBron. Well, the reason why is because my style, what I want. And, I, and, and this leads to the bigger picture with LeBron and Michael Jordan. We've never seen Michael Jordan, or at least I can't remember. Maybe you as a basketball aficionado can. Michael Jordan on a big stage, not show up. We can remember LeBron James just the other game three. I know he was sick; he had a little fever. But we, <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying. But can, yeah, yeah, yeah but, down long schedule. Yeah, but, yeah, we, <laughs> but we remember Jordan with the flu, dropping 35 against Utah. We've seen LeBron James in big moments before. Not show Look, up. Look, game three is nothing, okay? 2010 Celtics. Yes. I know the overall numbers Yes, are, nothing. Like, when you watch that game, because I've had people come back at me, like, he had almost, like, what, a triple-double, and you're telling me he was bad? And, like, you had to watch the game. Yeah, right. exactly. The Mavs thing was real, and I was weird about that in the beginning. So, I, I get your point. But when you start doing the Kobe-LeBron thing, and this is, like, Kobe's sick. But we give Kobe credit for missing big shots than we give LeBron for making the right pass. You know how dumb that is? Yeah, like, but the it, post-Jordan it, thing, the ego thing, we're like, man, Kobe, killer. Well, he, he missed it because yeah, we because looked, we want our stars right. exactly. yeah, yeah, right. because he we want our it. stars to take the shot. We want our guys in the sport. We want sit not make the right pass. Take a tougher shot. That's brutal. If you're the star, like that's what we want our stars. Okay, to but do. I think that's flawed. I think that's insane, Booger. It may be insane, but it's the as a sports fan. If I'm a fan of the of the New England Patriots, I want the ball in whose hand? Brady's hand. I don't care who the running – like, I want it in Brady's hand. Right, but what if it's – what if the safeties are all the way back and it's 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 first and goal from the three and there's three D linemen and they're all small run and Brady the ball. checks into and a run. And Brady will run the ball. I'm going to say, you know what, Tom made a fabulous check. <laughs> hey, I, I, I had a great check. On the bigger picture scale of all this, yeah, 
I've gone through Jordan's game logs again, and I was like trying to find. Right. There's not a lot in there where you go. Like, there's a, there's a couple sure. bad shooting games. You're going to find them. Yeah. yeah. But you're right. Like those things were on LeBron's resume. And if you want to say that those are the things that keep Kobe ahead of him, keep MJ ahead of him, there are arguments as I do this every day. There are arguments I can get really mad about. This is not one of them. Like, I can't get mad about the guy that tells me Jordan's still ahead of LeBron. I mean, that's not that ridiculous thing to say. I just don't like when somebody tells me that from an impact, their actual ability that there's still this massive gap because one guy was a killer and the other guy's a facilitator, mm. their impact on the game, they, they, are, they are generational players. And I don't, when this LeBron thing is done, the finals resume, he can't catch MJ. But what he's doing on the court... Like I'll see an NBC rerun every now and then, and I'll just sit back and go, this is sick, and I'm going to do the same thing with this guy. All right. Let's well, Bulls' Knicks games. Pretty good back in the day, at least for one side of it. <laughs> uh, Bill Russell, your guy, too. When we talk about the all-time champions, that's, you know someone's about to tweet that. Go to about Bill Russell if you're going to count rings, and I know you love Bill, but that's a right. separate conversation. He's not Hall of Fame Bill Russell. Right. Captain of the Boston Celtics Bill Russell. He told me that once in an interview. I interviewed him. I was really captain excited. Yeah. I've been nervous a handful of times, and we finally got Bill Russell and I said, oh, Hall of Famer Bill Russell. He goes, oh, excuse me. Excuse me, before we start. This is live on the radio. He goes, can I just, um, can I help you with something? And I'm like, oh, oh damn it. This is I your guy. screwed it up. I'm like 27. He goes, if you're going to introduce me, can you please start with <laughs> captain of the Boston Celtics, Bill Russell? Because that meant more to me than the Hall of Fame. Oh. And I was like, man, what an answer. We're oh. done. Whatever you want, Bill. Wow. Class and grace wow. personified. Guys don't really talk about antiperspirant. Despite that, 91% of Dove Men Plus Care users recommend it. Here's what they said. It blocks the, you know, perspiration, I think is the fancy word. It's comfortable. Uh, <laughs> it smells nice. My girl likes the smell. Well, it's, it, I, I don't know, it's hard. I think it's quite masculine. Uh, my underarms aren't the worst thing at the gym. It's kind of like the Hoover Dam from my armpits, I guess. Dove Men Plus Care Antiperspirant. Tough on sweat, not on skin. Alongside Booger McFarlane, I'm Adnan Nam Burke, in for Greeny and Gulk, or Mike and Mike on ESPN Radio and ESPN2, and thrilled to have Ron Rosillo with us. As always, you can hear the Rosillo Show 1 to 4 Eastern on ESPN Radio. Richard Sherman and the Seahawks. As I said to Booger and Mike Gulk Jr. earlier, I feel like I missed something. I feel like I went from this guy's one of the best cornerbacks in the league, they have this incredible defense, Pete Carroll's a rah rah players coach, to all of a sudden now they're thinking about trading him because in this day and age you're always going to entertain offers, to now all of a sudden there's a potentially poisonous atmosphere there in Seattle. It's defense versus offense. And you talked to Seth Wickersham and wrote the article, it used to be in the magazine. What did he tell you about what's going on right now, the inner workings of that Seahawks team? That it's fractured and that that interception at the goal line against the past two years ago was kind of the start of this and they still haven't gotten over it I mean it's like this bad breakup that they just can't shake and I suggested to Wickersham I go you know something tells me about the way Sherman is just his DNA and you got to understand Sherman like he ends up he's recruited by Carroll at USC wants to play receiver and he's like now I'm going to go to Stanford and play receiver for Harbaugh and then Harbaugh didn't want him and he almost left there, and then the defensive coaches are like, we'll take him, and then Sherman still convinced Harbaugh messed with him before the draft. Like, there's a lot of stuff there. So you start adding up all these things that people doubting you, that kind of puts together who he is, and I kind of get that. Like, I resonate with that sometimes when I hear about Sherman, think about all the people that doubt him, and yet when he can't seem to get over this, I ask Wickersham, I go, I'm wondering if he would always be at this point. Like, would he always find a way to follow this path to get to this point where he's just mad at the world no matter what? And Wickersham pushed back. He goes, absolutely not. That play has still divided this group. And then it leads into the Russell Wilson thing, which I think I get because, like, I've never been a huge fan of his post-game pressures. Like, there's nailing it and being cliched, and then there's, there's going so far beyond that where your goal is to never say anything remotely interesting, feel like there's absolutely – it's the shallow end of the shallowest pools whenever he's talking publicly. It just, it just is. And I think guys in the locker room are like, man, this again. But if Sherman's upset that Russ is getting too much love as the high-profile quarterback with a Super Bowl ring, then pick another profession because that's just the way it works. So I, can, I think Russ is a great quarterback. I think he deserves the accolades. And if the defense feels like he gets too much attention, like welcome to the NFL, man. I think here's the bigger issue, and, and, and maybe this is why Sherman feels that way. Having played on a team where the defense has been dominant and you felt like you should have won more Super Bowls like I was in Tampa, but your offense and your quarterback wasn't held to the same standard. Pete Carroll is famous for holding everybody to the same standard. Mm -hmm. It's tell the truth Monday. It's competition Wednesday. It's turnover Thursday, all these different days where they compete. 
And for whatever reason, I get the feeling that guys on defense don't feel that he holds Russell Wilson and the offense to the same level. And I think it goes back to a story that we all thought was kind of crazy when you're trying to make the MVP of that Super Bowl against the Pats, and instead of handing it off, making the easy play to Marshawn Lynch and their back-to-back champions, you allow Russell Wilson to throw the football. And Sherman wants an apology. And I think for whatever the inner workings of that organization have been, Maybe he feels like he deserves an apology because of the lack of criticism of Russell Wilson, the lack of criticism for the offense. So I understand where Sherman is coming from, from the standpoint of if you have a quarterback, and I like Russell Wilson too, but everybody's got to be held accountable. And if Pete Carroll isn't holding Russell accountable like he is that defense, then I can understand where Sherman is coming from. Okay, fine. A couple things on this. What about that defense that Brady lit up on two straight possessions and they had a 10-point lead? Right, you know, that's right. The, thing. Like, the Seahawks' so, defense is accountable for some. But they're not going to hold them to zero points, though, right? Well, that, that's that's fine, but like that part is like somehow like that part's not important. And by the way, the pick the pick is Malcolm Butler. Okay, the pick a is play. a great defensive play, and like I'm not like Booger on that play. The quarterback like that ball is snapped and it's out. Yeah, like you're not even really because re- you're just assuming. All right, we know exactly what we're doing. We've got this slant. The throw is going to be there, and you're like, what happens now? So you know what, though? Like, as, as juvenile as an apology sounds at the pro level about a misplay at the goal line two years ago in the freaking Super Bowl, then apologize to the defense. You know what? If I were Pete Carroll, like, all right, everybody, we're going to have Apology <laughs> Tuesday, and we're going to play the tape again, and I'm sorry, everybody. I'm sorry, because even though game situation and clock, we were going to have to throw it once. If, if Lynch got stuffed again, we were still going to have to throw it at some point. Yeah. We're sorry. Right. So now is everybody cool? Right. Like, I think Russ's interview stink, too, all right? <laughs> sorry. But like, the, if he can say so sorry dumb. dripping with sarcasm, right. then it's fine. Then but it's the okay. point is, though, until like, you're going to go, all right, now, yes, yeah, Super Bowl. Let's yeah. win on three. I, right. agree, I agree with everything you said, and the problem is, notice he hadn't asked for Russell Wilson to apologize for the pick. It's Pete Carroll and Daryl Belville for calling the play. And I think that's the bigger issue. Right. Okay, when you have a defense, play to your defense. And you're right. He's going to have to throw the ball, ball at some point. But don't throw it till you have to. Give the ball All right, that's, to, to Marshawn. But isn't he mad at the right people, though? Because it was the play call that was at fault. It wasn't Russell's pass. Right. But if you're Russell, like, he can't be mad at Russell Wilson because Russell isn't telling Pete Carroll, placate toward me or show, right. me, show me some favoritism. Right. He's mad at Pete because they're not holding the offense to the – like, I've lived this. Okay, we were in Tampa. Tony Dungy came in a defensive meeting room, and he said, guys, it's not good enough. This was after a game where we gave up like four points and 100 yards of total offense. But you're telling the defense it's not good enough. What about the guy that's holding the ball on the other side? What about Dilfer, King, Brad Johnson, some of the other guys? Like, we just wanted the offense to be held to the same standard as us. So as a former defensive player, I understand wanting the guy on the other side of the ball who's making $20 million a year, who we think is a top-10 quarterback, hold him to the same standard. It sounds like workplace drama <laughs> that we all have, and we just get to peer into it a little bit more. Right. Uh, you know what I thought was great, though, is that, that when Michael Bennett, yes. defensive lineman, started tweeting at us, going out oh, TMZ, would have expected more at Wickersham. Wickersham was like, check so, this. So Wickersham... <laughs> While he's on the air with us, that's the last thing I said. I go, what's your response to that? And he goes, I'd like him to see my phone from all the guys inside the building that told me I nailed it. Right. Nailed the story. If you want to reveal my sources. Well, like, he's not going to gonna do point, that. But, right. but I got the text right here. To Bennett's point, he did say that he went over Russell Wilson's house and they he had gave some a rib, rib, so everything they were good. good. Everything's good right. over rib. Like <laughs> rib good. make every. Well, the like, Sherman thing though that's important to remember here. It's not that they wanted to trade him necessarily. It was that they didn't shoot it down. Is I think a wake up call to him going like, all right, fine. Sherman is mad. Let's let's agree with Sherman on everything. Sherman's mad. He wants an apology. He hasn't got it. Shocker. Stud quarterback. Is not held to the same standard. There's some favoritism there because that never happens in every other locker room. All right, let's say Sherman is right about all of those things. Do you want to continue to be so mad that it actually hurts your team and what your goals are? What if it's not just Sherman? What if Sherman is the spokesperson for I think Thomas, right. I think, for Wagner, right. for Bennett, and he's that. just the guy that's, that's holding the torch? And to me, that's the bigger issue. If, because if you look at Seattle's team, if you listed their top ten players, six of them on defense. Yeah. I think six of them on defense, and if your best players feel this way, Pete Carroll's got to What if Pete said to him, hey, our O-line is not good, so back <laughs> off a of Russ? They're terrible. <laughs> the O-line is terrible. And you got basketball players playing offensive line. They're terrible. 
And in fact, if it's already fractured, it could be more fractured if they dealt Sherman, because then all those defensive guys would say, that's our one mouthpiece. That's our guy who will rally the cause. Now we lost him. Now we really hate yeah, Somebody else has got to speak up, dude. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Mike and Mike Romani, if you miss any of the show, including Jeremy Schapp in Hour 3, you can listen to all four hours of Mike and Mike On Demand in the ESPN app. And now you can subscribe to our Best of Podcasts. It's all available in the Listen tab of the ESPN app. Ryan's always great talking X's and O's on all sports, but it's always the most fun on the Rosillo Show when things go a little bit off track and a little bit awry. And yesterday, Steve Cerruti is one of the producers who does a fabulous job. He's a great guy, but he inflamed everybody by saying that he thinks the 80s are a terrible decade. And that's without qualification. That is music, movies, uh, fashion. He said he spent 13 months in the 80s and he regrets every month. And, you know, he's one of my closest guys, I say, professionally here over the years because he's worked with me for so many years. I love how you distinguish professionally. Go ahead. Right. And, uh, you know, he he is kind of our Ask a Millennial guy. We'll go to him. And, you know, we we talked about the Top Gun reboot. And he goes, ugh, Top Gun, terrible. And I go, the original? He's like, yeah, it sucks. (laughs) What is such a movie the 80s? Wait wait a minute, what? And he's like, yeah, he he thinks every movie is the worst. He was getting into the architecture. And the funny thing is I said, well, what's – like, what ranks above it? He's like, oh, the 70s. And the funniest thing about that is that Adnan and I, I know I'm a little bit older than you, yeah. but we would always look back on the 70s as the worst decade ever. Disco. Politically. Fashion. You know, like where we were going. Like, if you were telling people back then, you'd be like, no, everything will work out, will it? <laughs> you know, in the 80s, it was kind of this ruthless, let's do it. Like, I'll, I'll give you some of the music. Like, we get yeah, to people George like, Michael Lamb, I guess. Right, the Casio had just started picking up. <laughs> Video but killed the radio star. I... I don't know. Can you be an authority on a decade never being alive for it? Because, yeah, because the 90s had some real peaks and valleys. Yeah, yeah. Right. But I guess that's like a historian. You know, you can't critique the 50s unless you've lived it. That's not accurate necessarily. No, that's true too. Right. right. Because like if Oberman is talking shoeless Joe Jackson, do we say, right. sorry, sorry, Keith. Right. Like Doris Kearns right. Goodwin, someone like that. Talking yeah. No. Nope. <laughs> Irrelevant. You weren't there. It's all right. So maybe I should just walk that back a little bit. But I think... Like, I understand the downside of the 80s, but oh, I also yeah. know that, I don't okay, know, well, hey, well, maybe, you know what's scary? What if the 20-something is right? What if he's right about this? Do you think it's the worst decade? Yeah. How old are you, Booker? Uh, I'm 39. Right. I'll be 40 in December. And, and I think for me, like, I like the 80s. Like, I mean. What did you like about yeah, it? Yeah, why? What is it? That- Mesh why, tanks? Well, no, but it's, it's because that's, obviously, I was born in 77. So by the time you got to the mid-80s, I was eating good food. Like, I no longer was eating baby food by then. I was. I was still in ribs and gnawing on bones and things of that nature. So I'm going to relate this back to food. Not because who cares about music when you're five years old? Like it's all Wait, no, all right, tales but, and Dora. But you have to look at it through different prism. Right? No, look well, at it through I'm a 39 looking at year old eyes. Man. I'm not <laughs> looking at it through anybody. Else. You're looking through a 39 year old man's eyes. Reaganomics. You got a lot of going on. In the 80s. Right, but then once it was bad now. It was Easy E. You know, Yellow Walkman at the bus <laughs> yeah. stop. My dad's like Easy E. Who's yeah. that? I'm like, don't worry. NWA, about it. baby. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, what is it? my dad's like? What's that stand for? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Wish I knew, Dad. The '90s are great. The conversation will continue on the Ryan Rosillo Show, one to four Eastern on ESPN Radio. Sports Center come up after this, or you already knocked some out. Couple more. Couple Who's more. hosting today with Ronald Ronald Sports Center? Uh, Max. We get a Friday with Max Predos, which is good for the country because it puts everybody in a good mood. Daddy, where do babies come from? Uh, well, uh... Honey? Mommy went to the store. Oh, well, you see, um... Well, there's a mommy and a daddy, right? Right. And see, when they call Geico, uh, they could save a bunch of money on car insurance. Oh, really? And that makes them happy? Yes, that makes them very happy. That's good. Yeah. Well, I'm glad we could have this talk, sunshine. (laughs) Geico, because saving 15% or more on car insurance is always a great answer. Forward Thinking is brought to you by GNC, the lowest prices of the season sale. Visit your GNC and GNC.com. Select products only. Here's what's coming up this weekend on ESPN Radio. Tomorrow, it's the Mets at the Pirates. Coverage beginning at 6 p.m. Eastern. The Mets and Pirates also playing Sunday night. Coverage starts at 7 p.m. Eastern. And hook up your boy. Me, Tim Kirch, and David Ross are going to be in the booth on Monday, Memorial Day. We're calling the Yankees and Orioles from Camden Yards, 1 o'clock Eastern. So it should be a great game on Memorial Day. Who's taller, you or Kirch? I've got Kirkchen by a couple of inches. Um, He's that short? Yeah, exactly. I'm not that tall, and uh, he is that short. But phenomenal guy. I mean, we're looking at. I, I love him. Yeah, we're looking yeah, at love. substance, not stature in this case. But well, I, David Ross, now, when I mean, we're calling a game, how much Dancing with the Stars conversation are we going to get into? Well, David Ross is a phenomenal, like his story, his new book. We had him on yesterday. Mm-hmm. Phenomenal story. And I just love the fact that he was a veteran player who 
the Cubs didn't throw away. They used his wisdom, and he helped a guy like Rizzo, even in, in, the, in the, the World Series, right. for them to be able to use a veteran guy and the wisdom to help some of the younger players. Because the Cubs are a relatively young team, and I thought that he helped them tremendously last year. Yeah, it's incredible how a couple of years ago, backup catcher, baseball fans would know who he is, but now everybody knows who he is. He almost beat uh, – be, be the, be, and dance with the stars. He was yeah. the champion. It's Rashad crazy. Jennings, yeah. Rashad Jennings, the former Giants uh, yeah. player there as well. Um, also had this tweet here from Jacob. We have a trilogy for the NBA Finals. Which was the best trilogy in movies? Well, I'm wearing my Godfather 2 shirt today. Thank you to Kathy Leogrand for it. I knew it was you, Fredo. A little, I get upset when people are tweeting, oh, what's that shirt about? Like, if you don't know, then I'm not going to just tweet you back. But that's what it's about. Godfather 3, good, not great. First two are epics. Another trilogy, though, Back to the Future trilogy. One is incredible. Two is good. Three is awful. Yeah. I, I, I haven't seen many trilogies that live up. Like, even in, in the, on the comedy scene, like Friday. Yeah. Friday, next Friday, Friday after next. I mean, yeah. Friday, two months from now, like, is, <laughs> is, is, that, is that where we're going next? Like, right. First yeah. Friday, epic. Yeah. Next Friday, like, eh. Okay, the Friday third. after next, you're like, man, now the storyline's moving from the house to we're going down to Rancho Cucamonga. <laughs> like, we're just going too far. Hangover, first one, one of the funniest movies the last 10, yes. 15 years. Second one, awful. Third one, couldn't even watch it. Yeah, I mean, we're going too far. All right. Yeah. Um, uh, Brooksy wanted to say Kung Fu Panda. He does like the subsequent sequels there. Wow. Would you go Star Wars? I'm not Robert a big Star Wars you? guy. Yeah. Yeah. Empire no. Strikes Back is great. That's the second one, obviously. Yeah. But now, now it's all different. When you say second one, I'm thinking of sequential. But if you actually go by the Star Wars universe, exactly. you got prequels. Star now. Wars is kind of like X Men. Like, how many are they on right now? <laughs> I mean, how many have they made? Exactly. Logan, is that an X Men or is that different? Right. Like, I don't right. know. No, it's part of the superheroes family. Okay. Hashtag last time LeBron missed a finals courtesy of our friend Hembo, and this is a hashtag started by our Tom Haberstra. But these are the specific numbers huh? Hembo's given us here. Number one movie was Shrek Forever After. That's the fourth in the franchise. Number one song was OMG by Usher. Yep, thank you very much. Good job by the crew featuring Will I Am. Oh, my. Yeah, I like that song. Cam Newton had yet to start a game for Auburn. But he, I think he was already kicked out of Florida by then, though. <laughs> yeah, okay, good. Uh, research in Hembo has confirmed. Yeah, I'm just making sure. <laughs> no, like, no, he had right. started for Auburn, but he had already been kicked out of Florida by then. You are right. It's clear. Uh, Theo Epstein still the Red Sox general manager. Jeff Green averaged more minutes on the Thunder than Russell Westbrook. Bryce Harper played his final game at the College of Southern Nevada the same day as game one. Mm. And the Dougie was becoming popular. Teach me how to Dougie. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't, I know you want to so bad. Don't well, do it. It was interesting. Earlier you asked if I could twerk. What if I had said yes? Would you have, like, asked me to demonstrate here for the audience on ESPN2? This is live TV. Why not? Or, or would you have taken it at face value? When you no. said, can you twerk? I'm like, no. oh, okay, great. Yeah, no. Well, then somebody tweeted that we should have a show here, Twerk and Vern. <laughs> I'm That's, done. Galloway loves I'm, that. Twerk and Burke. Twerk and Burke? So, right, Twerk and Burke. So, it would just be me giving my ideas in the sports world, okay. maybe some dance. I was about to say, because that was when implied that I was Twerk and you was <laughs> no, Burke. No, 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 we're not okay. that. It's like how Ellen comes out and always dances to her show. So well, be, I mean, you got to be happy, man. you got to be have some fun with yourself. <laughs> you do have to have so, fun with yourself. What do you got lined up this weekend, Memorial Day? Uh, just relaxing, man. I'm going to fire up the green egg and put some ribs and chicken. Uh, and some sausage, and I'm going to just do it like we do it down south. There's going to be a lot of smoke coming from my house. You know, I got the smokers. So you're a big barbecue guy. I love barbecue, man. Some fry some catfish up. I promise you, I'm not throwing my catfish on the ice. <laughs> I'm throwing them in, in hot grease this weekend. <laughs> Let's go, Predators. Me and Boger will be back on June 5th. Everybody have a fantastic Memorial Day weekend. Thanks, as always. No doubt. For Boger McFarlane, I'm Adnan Burke.